Hi, and welcome to part one of How I Stealth Camp. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I set up my bash and use a bit of the local vegetation to give it a bit more stealthness and camouflage. I am G, and this is Big Grizzly Outdoors. Welcome to part one of how I set up a stealth camp. And if you're into stealth camping, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, selecting all notifications. That way you'll get all the videos as they drop. So today we're gonna to look at how we set up the shelter, the location of where we set up, and a bit of concealment as well. So we're out in the forest today. It's about 20 degrees Celsius. So for England, that's quite warm. We've already selected and recce the spot, which is what I recommend you do first. Just go out for a little hike, find yourself a little spot that you think would be suitable. What you're actually looking for is somewhere that's got already got a fair bit of concealment. Somewhere that's off the beaten track and also somewhere where you've got no mountain bike tracks or anything like that. That's not to say that you can't stray off the path for 20, 30 meters and set up a camp there. Sometimes that's uh, the best place. So we're off to a spot now that, that we already know and uh, that's where we're gonna set up the bash. So one thing you want to think about when heading off to the spot that you've already wrecked is what time you're going to go. Now obviously during lockdown the forests and the paths were quite busy all the time. But now people returning back to work we're finding it best if you head off roughly during working hours in the week. Now I know that's not practical for every, everyone that works, but you can also, if you know the spot really well, go in at night. Try and avoid peak times. Peak times when people are gonna be finishing work and heading off out on their mountain bikes or walking dogs. The same thing for the morning. You wanna truly get up and get out before the dog walkers come in. So if you're out on a Friday night and you're heading back on a Saturday, then you wanna be getting up at, the, at dawn, packing up and heading out. So without trying to teach people how to suck eggs, one thing that you must do if you're heading out into a bit of a secret location for your stealth camp is drop a pin and let at least one person know where you are, that way, if anything does happen and you're on your own, someone will be uh, out looking for you. So as always, let someone know where you are and what time they can expect you back. So, another little tip. If you're hiking into the woods and it's not private land, it's public, what I prefer to do is I don't have any, anything hanging off my pack. I don't have sleeping bags hanging off the bottom, roll mats hanging off the top. That way, it looks like you're just out for a bit of a stroll. Just a quick tip. Okay, well, we're now at our location where we're breaking off the path and heading to uh, the camp. Um, this is where you keep the noise down and uh, keep your eyes peeled as well. So as you can see, this is where we've come in. There's lots of vegetation here. And then what we've done, she we found this little break, little opening here. We're gonna set the basher up. So I selected a spot, as you can see, nice little area, um, 
we're right out of the way, we're off the path. I've got my bash here. I'm gonna set it up and then uh, we'll uh, see how we go. So in with my bash, you can use power cord and pegs and stuff. But I prefer the old army way, which is bungees. This is just a normal army issue poncho. Get these for about 19.99 off of Amazon. What I'll do is I'll put the link in the description. So that's the basic layout done as you can see I've used bungee four corners gone for four trees one thing that you want to be careful of if you're using bungees is that they're fixed properly because what you don't want to happen is in the middle of the night one of them flinging off and twatting you in the face because believe me that hurts what we want to do now is tie the hood up and raise the bungee, put it up to a bit of paracord and I've just wrapped around the tree a couple of times. It's all quick release and so should we need we can get out quick. One thing that is good if you can get your hands on it is some scrim. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of this over the bash just to give it that added, added bit more concealment. done is I've used it just to cover up the ends but what a great thing that it does is it just breaks up the line as well try and get rid of the straight edges what we'll do in a bit is we'll get some more of the natural foliage and use that as camouflage so as you can see I'm in an area of what would be natural foliage so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this down and camo up the bash as best I can but the thing is I've got to try and make it look as natural as possible what you don't want to do is you don't want to be cutting it right from the bottom. You want to keep the leaf and the, the actual foliage itself. That I find that works best. I'm not saying that's the right way or the wrong way, but for me personally, I've had the best results like that.
thing that I do want to touch on briefly, while I've been wandering around gathering the foliage to come out my bash, is I've been making sure I've been using heavy footsteps and I've not been reaching down onto the forest floor putting my hands where I can't see what's there. We've only got one poisonous snake in the UK and that's the adder and it is an ambush predator so it will just coil up and lie in wait. We're quite close to a stream here and also I have noticed that there have been frogs here so that is a source food for the reptile. Whilst an adder bite is not going to be fatal to me it's going to make me pretty sick and I'm about 45 minutes away from cell service. So if you are out just be careful what you're doing. Obviously for those of you in the USA you're pretty much used to this but over here in the UK it's not something that a lot of people consider. So, I've shown you how I pick a spot to stealth camp in. I've also shown you how I use my poncho as a shelter. Now you can use it like this, or you can use it in the plow point configuration. If you haven't seen my video on plow points, click here and it will take you straight to it. We've also looked at how I use the local foliage and a camouflage net to make it even more stealthy. Next week, in part two, I'm going to show you how I put together 24 hour ration packs, and more importantly, what I cook them on to keep it really stealthy. I hope everybody stays safe. See you next week.